What happened down on two? G'day, welcome to the Nerdy Dad channel and my review of the ninth episode of Andor, Nobody's Listening. I'm hoping that you're listening, so give me a like if you are. So, like the last episode, this one was directed by Toby Haynes. Until we know what happened, it's just a rumour, but I am going to talk about what happened down on two. But to do so requires spoilers. You've been warned. I will get back to Andor and the others on Nakina 5, but let's run through the other storylines first. This episode opens on Deidre Miro and Bix, so let's start there. Holy shit, we've seen torture before in Star Wars. And really, this is still not graphic, so to speak. This is still Star Wars, not Saw. But the thought of using the dying screams of children as torture, even if it wasn't alien children specifically to cause madness, that, that's just wow. Let's get on with it. As much as we've been cheering for her rising through the ranks, Deidre really is something. I mean, this guy's a piece of work too. We already knew Deidre had a reputation because back in episode two, Major Patrigas did say this to her. On a positive note, I was impressed with your detention numbers from Sev Top, far above the quota. I may be sending more of that sort of work your way. And now we've seen her brutality in show. Also, we learned that everyone is watching Marva. Last week, we found out that Sintra is watching her. And now we know that ISB are watching her too. Andor got to Ferex to say his goodbyes just in time. To avoid both groups of people who want to kill him. Now, uh, staying tangential to Deidre. Did anyone, anyone else see Cyril's stalker turn coming? At the start of the series, I seriously thought Deidre and Cyril would end up teaming up. Apparently, Cyril thought so too. Anyone for a bit of a Freudian analysis on this one? I mean, this scene definitely made me feel uncomfortable. Moving on to more wholesome relationships, we find out that Vel is Mon Mothma's cousin, someone who knows what's going on, who appears to actually have a good relationship with Mon. She can't stay long, but I think the time they did have together was good for both of them. And then we have Tay. He doesn't know everything, but he likewise seems to be good for Mon, unlike her jerk husband. I don't know who the, if we see this um, Davo Shulden next week or if he's going to come in the finale arc, but things are definitely heating up. The noose is tightening around Mon, and she has to make choices that she otherwise wouldn't make. Okay, we've waited long enough. Let's go back to Nakina 5. Everyone is rightfully talking about how good Andy Serkis acting is, and it's good. But in this episode, what I really liked was the way that Diego Luna played off him, and vice versa. I'm enjoying the character of Kino Loy, and I'm enjoying the character of Cassie Nandor. But what I'm really liking this week is watching them play off each other. Nobody's listening. Cassian's pushing, probing, trying to figure out how to get out of there. And Kino still thinks that if he can stay on program, he will get out. Nobody's listening. And then there's Olaf. Uh, we were set up for something like this to happen, but it didn't make it any less depressing when he suffered his stroke. The medic can't save him. He can only help him pass. And then that's when we find out what's happening down on two. Not just Olaf. Nobody is getting out of this facility alive. All of a sudden, that tunnel felt even more claustrophobic, even though it only had a handful of people in there. And then we get this. How many guards on each level? Never more than 12. Kino's call to action is answered in full. Let's see what happens next Wednesday night. There's loads more coming up on the channel, including plenty more Star Wars content. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is the Nerdy Dad, signing off.